Kendrick Lamar has finally... Ooh. What's up, fam? How have you been? How are you doing, man? Um, <laughs> The Pop Out concert is over, man, and it was fucking insane, man. It was yesterday, man. It was fucking insane, man. I did the reaction. Check it out, man. Check it out. I tried to do, like, uh, the Not Like Us reaction. Yeah, that was epic, man. The experience was epic. I watched the whole thing of of the camera, man. I watched the four, whole four hours, man. And it was insane, man. I think I'm going to do it again today because of the whole experience, man. You know what I'm saying, man? You got Roddy Reach there, man. You got Tyler the Creator. You got Blast. The Union of Black Hippie. What else, man? What else did I miss, man? We got um, YG. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, the same YG that Drake said was his friend, man. It was there, man. We got LeBron. We got Dazel Westbrook. Dazel Westbrook. We got, I don't know his name. Damar, the one who's, um, who, uh, who's friends with uh, Jay-Z. We got, uh, with Drake. What is this, Jay-Z, man? We got uh, Dr. Dre there. We got uh, Big Boy. Man, a lot of people with him, and it was insane, man. But after that, man, I have to come to check this uh, this uh, channel out, man. This uh, that covers the stories and everything, man, to see what he has to say. What he has to say, I know it's gonna be a headache a lot, man. And I'm here for him, man. This was dope, man. That was uh, like. Damn, dancing on top of somebody's grave, man. Shit, Drake, man. You gotta think about some, of something, man, to come out. To do a comeback or something, man. Because that was insane, man. You gotta top that, man, if you want. You're still gonna be a Drake, you know what I'm saying? Drake's gonna still be a Drake. I can't hate you that. He's still gonna outsell a lot of people. He's gonna still hit 100 billion listens on Spotify. Because he's Drake, man. Kendrick anyway, Lamar let's check this out. Come back outside How can Drake Lamar? And Ken and friends pop? How can Drake Lamar just ended Drake? Yeah. Kendrick Lamar has finally come back outside as he just had his Ken and friends pop out concert. That was and after insane. witnessing Kendrick's first performance following his beef with Drake, I think it's safe to say what we just witnessed is going to go down as one of the greatest moments of not just his career. But for the entirety of hip hop, yeah. what Kendrick did coming United. off the of the biggest rap beef of the 21st century was legendary in every sense of the word as he used all of the hype and excitement in the air to put together an event truly like no other. And of course, as everybody else is touching new levels of greatness, the townfall of Drake has just reached a new low as after everything that went down here. There should not be a single person on this planet that thinks that Drake somehow still came out of this as a winner or even in a matter where his career isn't in sheer and utter ruin because with this performance... I would say he lost the, the baby, but Drake makes music that girls love, white people love, so he's gonna sell though didn't take the route most artists would, which would just be to capture the success of what went down, perform the diss tracks live, and cash a nice check off all the hype. But instead of this, just like everything else Kendrick Lamar has done in his career, this performance was calculated, extremely well thought out, and super powerful, and while there are it many reasons insane. of why this was, it all comes back to the fact that from the moment the show started to the moment it ended, Every single thing that went down just further invalidated all of Drake's diss tracks, which have just aged like milk at this point, and what's even oh, more- Oh shit, Rambo was there, man. His first, he was the first one to perform, man. He started with a Undertaker uh, theme song sample, man. Oh shit, that was epic, man. Brilliant is that this wasn't because Kendrick was trying to spite him exactly, but Kendrick literally just proved that he is the clear winner of this beat, and that everything Drake has said is not just wrong. But it was genuinely embarrassing to even put in a song by just acting and showing who he really is. Now the first way this was shown was in the initial leg of the show which featured a set DJ by the one and only DJ Head and with this opening act, we got to see an array of unsung and underrated talent from the west coast get their chance to What's shine that on the biggest stage in the fact that I know who this is and what song this is is insane man. This is why side boogie. Or rainy days featuring Eminem, man. Underrated talent from the West Coast get their chance to shine on the biggest stage in rap this year during a concert that was not just attended by nearly 20,000 people, through my people my rainy but also day. being watched and followed by millions online. Now, there was a lot of West Coast artists who got to shine bright on such a big stage, and especially in this portion, 
Guys like Jason Martin, Jay Worthy, and the West Side Boogie were more ready for this moment than ever. And by giving these underrated and hungry MCs the chance to show off their skills, be discovered by fans who would have otherwise never known them, and even have the chance to go viral online by having so much exposure. Right off the bat. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me read this. West Side Boogie has been big in my in my wall, man. I I always respected him though. Uh, Kendrick calling Westside Boogie over put his arm around him while performing. Two of the best rappers alive. Bro, I'm trying to cry. The chance to go viral online by having so much exposure. Right off the bat, by just caring about the artist in his community. Why did you destroyed make me lines on Family Matters about him not giving back and showing love to where he is from as by sharing the stage this with so insane. many artists that while not being anywhere near Kendrick's cool, songs cool, are cool from boy the same place he is. It just shows from the very ground of this performance and on the most fundamental level what Kendrick was trying to pull off here and as things went on, this only became more DJ and more clear during DJ Mustard's Mustard showcase so many Tyler other was there, and man. artists from the West Coast riding off everything Kendrick did leading up to this, which when it comes to the most important moment of the night in terms of humiliating Drake during this portion of the show, while seeing artists like Steve Lacey Steve and Ryan Lacey, Rich on stage show Bad the Hall, oh, oh, man, this is insane, man. Ron Reach, Steve Lacey, you can hear Ben Harvey, man. Down over <laughs> even the slightest chance of getting a Drake feature. And while Tyler, the creator, garnered the most excitement from the crowd, not just because it was insane to see him rep the West Coast in this manner that was so unexpected, but also just because he's one of the biggest stars in rap and one of music's most exciting performers. What really was a bad look for Drake in this moment was when YG came out. <laughs> As one of Drake's biggest so-called chess moves during the Kendrick feud was his attempt to try to tear Kendrick's closest people, whether it was his label mates or rappers that he came up with apart from him, and especially in this regard, he really went all in on destroying is Kendrick. She's from, like, West Coast. Is she from West Coast? If, why is was she she's there, man? TD was there. He went all in on destroying Kendrick from his hometown when he shouted out YG on Family Matters and tried to pretty much force him you to be. You know who really bang is the is said, my nigga YG. And you bang that same <laughs> thing. But despite this, YG showed that one of Drake's biggest moves in the entire feud when it came to hurting Kendrick in this beef absolutely fell flat on his face as YG didn't just come out and show support for Kendrick as he channeled what it meant to be a West Coast MC in the arena like only a few other guest did but that he has his own problems with the OBO rapper because from his subliminal diss a few weeks ago to the way he aggressively told DJ Mustard to cut him and Drake's collab who do you love short right before Drake's part came on which I don't think many people noticed yet as just so many things went down all See, I all didn't notice giving them. smaller rappers from his hometown the chance to shine on what may go Who's down as love? the biggest night of his career and by having rappers Drake once considered friends and pawns that he could move against Kendrick like YG show that this beef has only brought him, Kendrick, and their coast closer together. Drake's diss tracks hold almost little to no weight at all anymore because aside from the lies and the invalidation of his entire strategy that of course we saw on the disaster of the hard part since. The remaining jabs that still held any sort of validity on a cut like Family Matters don't even make remote sense anymore and just have shown themselves to be even more elaborate lies that Drake created and when it comes to Drake being maybe the biggest liar in rap. Dang. When Kendrick came out to perform in the final act of the show, it really showed off just how delusional and insane the Six times, is man! You perform now like a six look at all times! Totality, it really leaves Drake's disses and strategy as some of the worst drawn up ever in a major feud because as everyone remembers, another one of the main digs Drake tried to get in on Kendrick to tear him up from the inside was by saying that he gets more love than Lamar in Kendrick's home city and that Kendrick is not really as big as he seems and that he doesn't even belong in a big three and during Kendrick's performance. He made sure that nobody will even think these things again as he disputed all these ideas as he delivered yeah, one of the greatest hits of his career but not just because of his energy or the fact that he ran through his greatest hits but because of how he put every single lie that was ever told about him during his beef to rest. Now, no moment showed this better than where Kendrick came out to his first full-on response track to Drake, Euphoria, which in a beef where as more points were placed on the board, the higher risk there was for one artist's net of attacks to just cave in. With a track like Euphoria, as Kendrick did his research and made a piece of music that wasn't flimsy enough to just crumble when his opponent responded on impact. Everything he said here still applies to and him and the young it represented when the song came out. The song is now becoming this ever-evolving musical hit piece that doesn't just reflect Kendrick's thoughts on Drake when he wrote it, 
but that also echo what he is thinking in the very present moment of where the rivalry is at as during this performance. While of course Kendrick repeated most of the timeless jams which will probably apply to Drake and haunt him forever. He also added in some new lines, like when he said, Give me Tupac's ring back and might give you a little respect. Now compare this to Drake's diss tracks, which have only dissolved into embarrassing rants of delusional gossip, and the all-time failure of Drake insane. is only more apparent and during his performance. Him, One of the most beautiful moments of the entire concert was when Kendrick Lamar, J-Rock, Absol, and Schoolboy Q reunited on stage as Black Hippie, and Black after a time Hippie. where it seemed like this group was just not making music together anymore, and that they also may have not been cool with Kendrick, which was the rumor that Drake tried to use against him throughout his diss tracks as he talked about how Kendrick's label TDE does not respect him. On top of this moment being one of the most powerful things that the genre has seen in man. years, it just melts off another one of the ways Drake tried to take Kendrick down and overall, TD. with the failure of Drake's entire barrage of diss tracks against Kendrick Lamar never being seen greater than right in this moment where during the concert his words were not just Man, I really wanted Benny false. Kim to perform, but, but it seems like he's not from uh, uh, the West Coast, man. It seems like he's like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, where is he from, man? Las Vegas? I don't know, man. I don't know. But yeah, the reason I heard like the reason why he didn't perform is because that was supposed to be West Coast oriented, and he's not West Coast. Kendrick delivered moment after moment, especially in instances where he performed like that, and the arena was so energized as he declared there was no longer a big three. And Those when Kendrick went on to perform Kings, Not Like Us five yeah. times in a row, which from the row, which from oh, the amount of times, times the crowd man. got too six high, times. and had to restart the song to when everyone from Compton at the show came up on stage to dance and celebrate <laughs> the anthem they created, which resulted in this surreal moment where Kendrick Lamar, Black Hippie, DJ Mustard, YG, Steve Lacey, Russell Westbrook, DeMar DeRozan, and so many others were just turn it up together as thousands in the arena and millions in the world galvanized behind kendrick to not even really district but just to celebrate hip-hop the west coast and as kendrick lamar expressed towards the end hip-hop of the ain't album, dead man a rare moment of unity where i'm gonna say man 2024 just proved that hip-hop is not dead man i feel like 2024 might be the same as like maybe the round from 2010 to 2018 man uh, because that's the 2018 I kind of went low, you know what I'm saying? After 2018, kind of went like downhill, you know what I'm saying? But now, man, I'm confident to say, man, hip hop in day, man. Where so many people came together, ultimately. While the show was as hyped up as it was because of the Drake beef, Kendrick Lamar used this performance to make a moment so much bigger than a feud in rap could ever be, and because of this, Lamar didn't just make history what, the, one of the most unexpected and it. meaningful ways he could have with this show. But by almost ignoring Drake in a way, and making these moments that blossomed from the root of his and Kendrick's tensions into what feels like the revival of the true spirit and essence of what yeah. hip-hop represents, especially on the regional level. Kendrick's managed to humiliate Drake more than anyone could have expected, as his loss isn't just going to give one man a victory. But it's inspired the entire spirit of a genre to be in the most unified place it has been, and if this beef can do all this... It really adds another medal to Kendrick's jacket because it's showing how even in a situation that seems so negative as he went into a lyrical gladiator match that really did get intense at times. It was ultimately for the betterment of hip-hop and what he cares about most. So while this beef may never be truly over, if Drake continues to ride off the momentum of his failure and eventually... I am sure we will get another Kendrick diss on his end in the form of a subliminal shot. It's clear that with this legendary concert that we will be talking about for years to come, Kendrick Lamar showed that he didn't just win the beef, but that he brought hip-hop back into its purest form in decades. So let me know, what do you think of this concert and everything that went down? Let me know your favorite moments in the comments, I can't wait to hear what you have to say, and if you want to see why Pharrell Williams just dissed Drake, check out the suggested video. I will say... My favorite man when was like uh, first the Red Rich and then Tyler and uh, maybe yeah in the and Dr. Dre man. damn man all painting for no I like us that was insane man and I had like he's recording a music video this weekend for no I like us and yeah man. Let me know, man, your favorite moments from this concert, man. What part did you enjoy the most, man? And be sure to check out my reaction to No Like Us, man. And yeah, man, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace and love.